25 years and nearly 8,000 episodes, he's been the host of television's favorite quiz show. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. But before he was the man with all the answers... Hello, my name is Trebek. The Sudbury, Ontario native got his start at the CBC in the 1960s, while he was still a philosophy student at the University of Ottawa, becoming a newsreader, sports anchor, hosting music shows, and of course, game shows right here on this network. The question is worth 10 points. I represented St. John in the Canadian House of Commons. Alex Trebek's trademark poise, brain power, and wit have made him into one of the most recognized and respected figures on TV. Back in March, he shared his cancer diagnosis with the world. This week, I was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. All the while comforting millions of fans with his humor and honesty. I plan to beat the low survival rates for this disease because under the terms of my contract, I have to host Jeopardy for three more years. Off camera, Trebek has been a champion of geographic literacy. Alex Trebek has instilled a love of learning in millions of people around the world. Even honored with an Order of Canada for that work. I'm in up with Alex Trebek at the new Centre for Geography and Exploration. Good to see you. Thank you. Does it feel at all like a homecoming when you come to this city? Always. Because it is my favourite city in Canada. Mm. Uh, I have so many great memories of my time spent here as a boarding student at the University of Ottawa, yeah. then at the university itself, and beginning my career with the CBC for the first two years here in our nation's capital. So yes, it always feels good to come back home, and I've maintained the connection with the university, yeah. and in more recent times, I've developed a relationship with the Royal Canadian Geographical Society, so that works in favor of that feeling also. So yeah, you, that's why you're here today. So just ex maybe explain to people why that's so important to you. Well, I don't know. When I was growing up, geography was my favorite subject in school. I tell people that it's because I like to color the maps <laughs> and I stayed inside the lines. Doesn't surprise me. But I've always believed that if you know geography, you have a better chance of understanding humanity because you know why different people settled in different areas. You know the development of those countries. You know bound, why boundaries have been established over centuries. And all of that can only work to the benefit of humanity because if I understand where you're coming from, maybe I'll be nicer to you. I won't be quite so mean. Mm. Uh, you, you've talked about your health and of course that's what most people are thinking about when they see you today, how you're feeling. Feeling tired. Uh, but that's okay. The last uh, chemo was three days ago, and it didn't bother me the first day, but then it sort of, for some reason, after a few days, sure. starts to gang up on you. And But that's all right. I mean, you it comes with the territory. You don't look tired. Well, I am. <laughs> Why are you so, um, I don't know, stubborn maybe, or really committed to things like this? You, you've just had chemo. Why would you just say, oh, forget it, I'm not going to do this, or I'll because take a night I, off from the show? or? Oh, uh, unless you're dead, if you made a commitment to an important group and a, an important association, and the RCGS is certainly that, and a lot of people are counting on you, a lot of people are coming here because they expected me to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I'm dead, I'm coming, <laughs> and I arranged to come. And the same thing for the show? There was not any point where you wanted to call in sick? No, no, no I don't do that unless I... I really can't perform. The only time they had to cancel tapings because of me was on one occasion when I completely lost my voice. But aside from that, I've been there with kidney stones, I've been there right after my heart attacks, mm -hmm. I've been there after dropping a giant jackhammer on my left foot and, <laughs> and hobbling out. So I. Is that just the way you were raised? Well, I'm Canadian. <laughs> I played hockey. Shebang <laughs> tough. I'm a tough guy. When you decided to release the video about your pancreatic cancer, how, how difficult was that to... Not at all. No. I wanted to stay ahead of the tabloids because I knew they'd be getting involved with all kinds of misinformation. I did not want that to be the way things worked out. So, and I believe in being honest and forthright with the public because I've been in the public eye now for more than half my life. I've had a broadcasting career which has lasted over 55 years. So, yeah. 
And, and in that uh, video, you, you did talk about the prognosis not, not being great. Mm. Now, normally the prognosis for this is not very encouraging, but I'm going to fight this and I'm going to keep working and with the love and support of my family and friends and with the help of your prayers also, I plan to beat the low survival rate statistics for this disease. It, was that message as much for you as for people, other people with pancreatic cancer or fighting those well, kinds of things? For both of us, I think, because we never know at the beginning and I don't know now. I had my last chemo this past week and I go in for a PET scan uh, day after tomorrow and then we'll have a better idea as to where things stand. And if we've managed to get rid of some of the tumors, that'll be great. And then I can go to immunotherapy uh, because they have discovered that my cancer is a specific mutation that responds well mm -hmm. to certain kinds of immunotherapy. So you've, you've got a choice. You can be pessimistic yes. or you can be optimistic. It's a lot better to be optimistic because you stand a better chance of helping to cure yourself. You, uh, you, you have talked about those, some of the, the bleaker moments. Uh, one is depression and sadness. Mm -hmm. um, is that the first time that you've experienced that kind of looking in the eye of something that you weren't sure you'd be able to? Well, not really because last year, as I mentioned at the Emmy Awards show, I had uh, brain surgery for two fairly large blood clots on my brain that were life-threatening and they had compressed the brain down uh, quite a bit and that was frightening. Uh, that provided me with a certain amount of uh, depression mm -hmm. because I didn't know what it was. I, I thought I was having uh, the beginnings of a stroke. My mother had just passed away a year and a half earlier from a stroke so that was on my mind and that scared the daylights out of me. But this for some reason the cancer is, hey, so many people get cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone out there. And I want them to feel that they're not alone, that they have somebody uh, who can speak out in public on their behalf and raise their hopes yeah. because that's so important. And I've gotten messages from people all across America, all across Canada, prayers, advice. I've had so many masses said on uh, my behalf. Does that surprise you that there, there would be this kind of outreach? It did to a certain extent, really? but there are a lot of really nice people out there, <laughs> so it no longer surprises me. Has there been a message that has been particularly touching or resonated with you in a different way? Just uh, to have a strong belief in a superior being and leave it in his or her hands. You, you've also talked about some of the pain associated with this and yeah. how you were taping during yeah. the pain. And I'm Canadian too, listen, but I don't, I'm a bit of a wuss, I guess, compared to you. I would just call it quits, and you, you went through that pain. Well, once you understand where the pain is coming from and what its limitations are, and as I indicated in one interview, those spasms usually last 10 to 15 minutes. And, but this was different. This was a stomach spasm, and my stomach just got very firm, and I said, oh, gosh, that ball inside the stomach has uh, cracked or whatever. Mm -hmm and uh, that's gonna be a serious problem. But then it went away, so I said, oh, okay, let's do it. I, I was reading some of the articles that came out after your, uh, after your diagnosis and after your video, and there were so many people, so many famous people, and so many regular people who feel like you are this part of their, I mean, even the Prime Minister just said it, how he grew up uh, watching it with his dad. Those of you who remember my father might know that he wasn't a big fan of his kids watching television. Indeed, uh, we got about a half hour a week in general, except one exception was made, that when we got home from school, we were allowed to watch Jeopardy. How oh, you were such a big part of their lives. Do you feel that? Well, yes, now I do, because keep in mind, I've been doing this show for 35 years. I've been in your home every evening for 35 years, if you're a loyal fan. Yeah. And uh, yes, and it has taken me by surprise the extent to which the show has been a factor in the lives of Canadians and Americans. Yeah. And by extension, how I also have become a part of their lives. So. It's all good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening with the show now? Because there's this. We're on hiatus. Yeah, but there's but this But the guy teachers' who's tournament. Doing great. The teachers' yeah. tournament yes. is on. Jeopardy! James yes. will return this coming Monday. You have just set a one-day record. 
again. And uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, interesting. And you think he's good because he's a gambler or because he's just very smart? I think he's good because he's smart. Yeah. He's yeah. bright as all get out. How do you think you would do if you were a contestant? I'm 78 years old. Yeah, but you can't tell. Yeah. Yes, yes you can. My wife can tell. I can tell. Yeah. You'd still do okay, though. Against my peers. Yes. You, do you still love it after all these years? Do Absolutely. You, yeah. It's the best kind of job for somebody like me. I've been uh, very lucky in my career, uh, throughout my career. I've gone from one show to another show. Even shows that didn't succeed helped me, mm -hmm. and they all prepared me for the show that many people feel I was destined to host. And if that's the case, hey, good. Well, it's a thrill to meet you. And Thank you. I wish you, uh, I wish you good health. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you it. very much, Richard. All right.